Hey, season of greetings to you one and all. It's been a minute since I've seen a lot of you. It's uh, always an honour to be asked to share a testimony uh, because I know that testimonies do change lives and uh, I'm going to take a few minutes just to give you a backdrop of how I came to Christ. Uh, kind of usual format, who I was before, how I came to Christ and how life's been since then. But bear with me, I'm going to have to go back a little bit to come forward. I grew up um, in an inner city area. Uh, in Birmingham, Hansworth. Uh, my mum was a praying woman, but she never went to church, and my dad never went to church. So I went to church as a little boy, but I didn't understand anything about church or really who God was. But after leaving school, um, I soon realised that uh, I had a lack of opportunities around me and uh, I was never going to get a job as a brain surgeon. So I kind of drifted into the environment that I lived in. Before I knew it, I was caught up in that environment and involved in things that I really shouldn't have been involved in and got into uh, a very chaotic lifestyle. Uh, by the time I was 17, I had two cars and no job and, and got arrested by the police several times thereafter. 19, I'm on the police surveillance because by that time, they've realized I'm um, associated with people who are involved in the, what they would call organized crime. To me, they were just friends. Um, and that progressed through my 20s and by my mid-20s I'd already been arrested several times and, and, and already been to prison. And I guess my objective through my 20s and even into my 30s was just not to become the victim. And uh, I guess you get to the point where people respect you and actually fear you. And that's your only real protection in, in that environment. So. I guess along my 20s and 30s, I got involved in a lot of things that I shouldn't have got involved with. People definitely got hurt. There was definitely violence. There's definitely lots of um, things that were um, what were illegal. Um, but I started to live life to pretty much extremes and got to a stage where I was just enjoying life and I was literally clubbing, going to nightclubs every every day, every night sometimes in, in different cities and sometimes different countries I got to the point where I guess I was living that life everybody wanted to live because that's what the world told me was successful earning money clothes cars nice house all the rest of it um, there, but there were times where I felt quite lonely and I remember times that my mom used to pray for me and my grandmother used to pray for me and I didn't know who they were praying to, but whoever they were praying to was their God. And I was glad when they prayed because things kind of got better when they prayed, but I didn't know who their God was, but they carried on. And I got to a point um, where people wanted to be me, I wanted to be around me, but I didn't want to be with me. I was just bored with that lifestyle. And I got to that, that stage where I thought, there's got to be more to life than this, because I've been living this life since my, teens and by the time I was 25 I probably had done most of the things that I ever wanted to do. I had a couple of houses, I had a, um, cars, I was just, just it was great. Um, but it was empty and I look back at it now and the Lord had exposed me to all the things of the world but they just didn't satisfy me. I felt the kind of towards 2000, middle of 2003, I felt really uncomfortable with the extreme chaotic lifestyle I was living but I didn't know anything else and I used to say to people don't do what I do because you might not get away with it I just do this because it's all I know but I start to end up in places and situations with people and and, and and think what am I doing here this is this is not it's not really what I want to do late 2003 I got that I got that that calling up things need to change but I didn't know what and I just felt the urge to go to church and I remember being in Barbados going to visit my mum and I'd never been to church with her and I felt I need to go to church and I went out clubbing as usual then I went to church and I just felt this is something there was something pulling me and even when I came back to the UK which is probably uh, early early January I just felt an uncomfortableness about my lifestyle and I didn't know what church was about, but I felt I needed to be in church. And I remember going to a church with a, a friend of mine, uh, my accountant actually, and I thought, this church is, you know, because I, I didn't really know people who went to church, so I had to kind of hunt around. And I went to this church and, and it was 
Pentecostal church, a lot of clapping, a lot of singing. It was loud, and I didn't, didn't, I didn't understand worship, and I didn't understand church. So I thought this is too loud. I don't know what this doing when I'm standing up they're sitting down when I sit down they stand up I was getting it all wrong I was missing all just all the church signals so I, I left and then went back I thought they're weird these church people are weird because I actually did think the people who went to church were weird the next week I felt that call it I found another friend that I knew from way back when I went to, went to his church and they're all wearing white gowns and weird no couldn't do it and I thought the next week I thought, God, I'm going to give, whoever you are, God, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to go to church. And I thought, if I could go to church and just like an itch and scratch the itch, I could just get on with my life. So I called my uncle and I went to his church. I persuaded him to let me come because he knew my lifestyle and didn't want me to. He just, he just was suspicious because he, he just thought, why do you want to come? Anyway, fast forward, I got into church and the pastor preached about a message about um about being financially strong and physically strong which i was but spiritually weak and i thought oh that's me i've got no spiritual compass in my life at all I, anything goes i do wrong things i just justify them i don't care people get hurt so what I, my rules were there were no rules and i thought carl this is for you you've got no spiritual compass in your life and she said the prayer of salvation and i didn't know what that prayer was but once she said it, she said, if you said that prayer and you meant it, you need to join me at the front of the church. And I thought, no way am I going to the front of the church because no. And I felt a fear come over me. And I'd never really run from anything on the streets. If people were looking for me, I would find them first and they would regret it. And that's the way it worked. But I just felt a fear. And I looked at my uncle and I said, uncle, I need to go to the front of the church. But I'm scared. And he looked at me and said, Carl, it's time. I'll go with you. So we started to make our way to the front of the church. And by the time I got probably a third of the way there, my knees were weak. I started to feel emotional. I started to cry. I never even cried as a child. And I had a conversation with God because I was thinking, you can't be calling me. Remember, this is a God I don't know. You can't be calling me because of what? Look at all the things I've done. Look at all the things that people have heard. Look at all the things I plan to do. And I heard a voice say to me, Carl, I know all you've done, but I want you. I want you. And if you just come, if you just come to me, I will sort all those things out. Just come. And I, I asked, well, who's this God? And anyway, I got to the front of the church. A guy prayed for me and he said, Carl, your life will change today. It's never going to be the same again. And I thought, what was he talking about? I've never seen this guy before. I've never been to this church before. After his prayer, I felt an immediate peace that I never felt before. And he was right. My life changed that day. I'll be honest, it hasn't been plain sailing. But all the things I used to do, I lost the appetite for. Uh, I just changed as a person. Um, and there's been some challenges, there's been some ups and downs. I mean, I, I, the Lord moved me from Birmingham out of that environment to London. I got a job here, then I started a business, I settled down, I found a church, met Pastor Doug. And things were still challenging, but the Lord has changed my character, changed my name and changed what I was. And it, it's almost 20 years now uh, that that's happened. One of the things that's changed my life the most and been most satisfying is joining the prison ministry in Emmanuel, uh, which has probably has got to have been about seven or eight years, or if not more. I know you don't really see me, but I'm still here. Um, and that's been satisfying because it's allowed me to share testimonies. It's allowed me to meet people who and minister to people who were me. I was that person many years ago, and God had transformed my life. And if it can transform my life, uh, some of those guys I meet, I share stuff with them and it really, I, I connect with them because I was that guy. Most of my friends went to prison. I know what prison's all about. I, I know what my life's about. But the key thing I want to take from this is my mother and grandmother continue to pray for me. And I don't know who this is for, but pray for your sons. Pray for the, the, the men in your life. Pray for your, your brothers. Uh, mothers keep praying because if my mother and my grandmother hadn't prayed for me 
I'm not sure where I'd be. Their prayers covered me. And God saw all of my wrongs, but he heard their prayers. And he knew that once he called me, I would come. And his name would be lifted up high. So I just encourage you. I've had to cut my, I've had to top and tell this testimony, but I think you get the gist of it. Um, that's where God has brought me from. So if you can do it for me, you can do it for your sons, you can do it for your brothers, you can do it for the men out there on the streets, because I was one of those guys. So I'm out of time, but not out of testimony, but I hope, I hope this helps and I hope this reaches someone. So once again, God bless you.